Welcome to Obsidian Dawn Photoshop Tutorials. Today I'm going to explain how to make the most of brushes by adding multiple colors to them, and sometimes, if wanted, removing transparency. I will show you what I mean during the course of the tutorial. First off, there's a few different ways that you can add multiple colors to Photoshop brushes. A lot of it depends on the type of brush you're using. I've broken it down into two different types, as you'll see here and I'll show you how to make all three of these images. The first type will keep the original brush shape all one color, but will be adding colors to the different parts within the brush shape. It works on solid or vector type brushes, like this Paisley image, but it also works on gradient or image-based brushes, like many of the older brush sets that you'll find at Obsidian Dawn. The second type is mostly useful for the solid or vector type brushes, and we'll actually be going in and changing various colors of the parts of the brush, as you can see in the cherry tree blossoms example on the bottom. Now keep in mind that this tutorial is meant for those with a basic knowledge of Photoshop and know how to load up a brush set, resize brushes, make a new layer. Uh, also, this was made in Photoshop CS3, so if it doesn't look exactly like your version, that's fine. Uh, Photoshop hasn't changed that much in its basic structure over the years, so this tutorial should work fine for most versions. Now, let's start with the first image, the Paisley brush set, which comes from my Paisley Sketches brush set. You should find a link in the screen for those interested. You'll notice that I have a palette of colors that I want to use already added. It's on its own layer, just so that I can delete it afterward nice and easy. It's just there for the purposes of this tutorial. First, uh, choose your color for the brush itself, which in this case is brown. I load up the brush set then, Paisley Sketches. Then, once you uh, have the brush that you're going to use, chosen. You just want to resize it so that it's the size that you want. And then make sure you go over on the right in your layer palette and click on create new layer, the button on the lower right, to make a new layer to place the brush on. Uh, make sure your brush opacity is 100%, then click once on the canvas to place your brush shape. Now here I'm going to load up the basic round brushes because what we're going to be doing from here on out is basically coloring like in a coloring book. Now I'm going to go rename this top layer brush shape so that we can keep track of it. Uh, then create another layer beneath that one. Since light pink is the predominant color that I'm going to be using in this image, uh, as far as colors go, what I'm going to do is fill in the whole shape with pink first. Now to do that, make sure that you have the brush shape layer selected, then choose the magic wand tool and click once outside of the shape. This is selecting the area around the brush shape. Now, because these aren't actual vectors or Photoshop shapes, they have a bit of fuzziness around the edges, and this is going to cause some color bleeding problems if we were to just inverse the selection right now and throw some color in there. You'd see some of the color around the edges in that fuzzy area. So what I'm going to do is select, modify, and expand the selection by about three pixels. Then we will go in and inverse it. And then the current selection should be the shape of the brush minus a few pixels worth at the edges. But that's covered up by the brown shape of the brush anyway. So there I inversed it. Now once you've got the right selection, uh, you I'm going to click back on the layer that I made beneath the brush shape layer. Choose a paint bucket tool. And with the color that you've just chosen, just click once within the brush shape. As you see, this fills up the whole shape with that light pink. And from here, there's various ways to apply color. You can use the magic wand tool and try to select areas for a certain color, but this particular brush has very rough edges, so that way won't work very well all the time. So what I'm gonna do here is take a round brush and make a new layer above the pink layer and below the brush shape layer. I, I like to make a new layer for each color. And then go in there and paint it in. So I sped this part up a bit since you don't want to watch me paint all this, but I also wanted to show you an alternate way to do this part if you'd rather. Uh, you could use the lasso tool and select the areas that you wanted to color in green, then just use the paint bucket to fill it in. Sometimes the magic wand tool works too, which I will show you in a bit. And if you mess up, the great thing about having each color on its own layer is you can just go back and erase your mistakes. Now, here's how you would use the magic wand tool. 
First, you want to make sure that your brush shape layer is selected again. And then this band around the outside of the paisley, before you get to the frills, I want green. And it's fairly open, so that's the best kind of area to use the magic lasso on. But we want to avoid that fuzziness again, so I'm going to click somewhere within the part that I want to make green. Then choose Select, Modify, Expand. Now this will move the selection out a few pixels so that it's now underneath that brown line. Then select the Paint Bucket tool. Make sure you have your green layer selected and then just click inside there. Now obviously this is the most efficient way to color things in uh, when it works. Just keep in mind that you will need a pretty wide open area for the magic lasso to work well. You can always hold shift down and use the magic wand or lasso to keep grabbing areas and keep grabbing areas and if you're studious enough and if you prefer to skip the painting method that will work. Just make sure you expand it by a few pixels at the end so that you don't have that fuzzy color overlap. And you can always touch up stuff with the paintbrush later if you need it. Now I'm just going to go through, as you see, and paint some of these other green areas like the leaves. And I'm going to make another layer for the blues and repeat the process. Then again, another layer for the darker pinks and repeat the process. Just make sure that you keep each color on its own layer to make your cleanup easier. Now the next one I'm going to show you is the same type, type 1, where we won't be altering the actual color of the brush itself, but more like using it as a guideline for our painting. It's used on image-based brushes of the kind that I don't really make anymore on Obsidian Dawn. I came to realize that in most cases, if people want an image, they'd rather have it already colored, like a stock image. So that's where I shifted my focus when it comes to images, and I focus most of my brush making on textures and designs. But for those that I do have, and those that you find elsewhere, here's how you would color them like I do in my preview images. Start out on a new layer with black selected as your color. I'm using a brush from my Pressed Garden Flowers brush set. And on that new layer, click once to create the brush shape as our outline. I have uh, named the layer outline to keep track of it. This is gonna be the guide that you use for your coloring, just like before. Now this is what I meant when I said removing transparency. As you'll see from these brush types, if I go and paint something behind it, you can completely see through that brush, and you may not want that. So this is how you would completely remove the transparency from one of these brush types as well. We will start the same way as before. Select your magic wand tool and click somewhere just outside the brush shape. If your brush shape has holes, you'll have to select those areas too, but this one doesn't. Now here I'm playing around with the Select, Modify, Expand, and putting in different numbers of pixels. I'm just expanding it by one pixel each time and then seeing where it ends up. Now what you want is for the selected area to just barely go underneath the outline of the brush, enough so that there's none of that color bleeding, but not too much because you don't have a solid brown line to hide things under anymore like we did in the Paisley. It needs to very closely match up with the edge of the brush if possible. So then once you've got it right, select and inverse. And then we're going to do the same thing for this one that we did on the last one. Uh, create a new layer for every color. So I'm going to create another layer underneath the black outline layer for my purple, which is the main color of my flower. And just take the color, plop it down in there using the paint bucket. Now most of the time your edges are going to look a bit raggedy. Again, that's based on the fuzzy quality that these non-vectorized designs have. You could remedy that by taking the blur tool and blurring the edges a little bit, or using the smudge tool and smudging them into the right shape. The quick fix though is to just use a filter, blur, Gaussian blur to blur the whole layer just a little bit. That should take care of the choppy edges. If you're really studious, by the way, you can always just paint that layer in manually if you want to make sure your edges are clean and clear. Now this part I'm going to speed up again. The first step I take here, by the way, is to add a layer style to that purple. I used Inner Glow and added a bit of lightning around the edges of the shape. There's really all kinds of things you could do while painting these in, from layer styles to different layer blending types to painting with texture brushes instead of the basic round ones. You can even add a pattern to one of the color layers if you like, and um, if you want to give it a bit more texture than the brush itself has. Once you've done this first step, by the way, all the transparency to your brush is now gone, as you can see here when I draw the line behind it. Now, I just keep creating new layers for each color in painting. One of the only problems with the colors I've chosen here is yellow. Uh, yellow doesn't work so well under black. It ends up looking muddy. 
So what I do at the end here is to make a new layer beneath all the other layers. I call it combination layer. Then click on that layer in your layer palette and holding shift down, click on the very top outline layer. This should select all of the layers you've created except for the background layer from outline all the way down to combination layer. Then hit control E or command E if you're on a Mac to combine those layers all into one. Then you can adjust the whole thing together. Um, I go into image adjustment, hue and saturation, or contrast and brightness. Uh, I up the contrast on this a little bit and lower the saturation. As you can see, those yellows don't look nearly so muddy anymore. And now on to the last type, type two. This is the kind where you're actually changing the color of the brush in places. It works best on solid shapes or vector type brushes. I'm using a brush from my Vector Foliage Pack. We're going to start just like we did before. New layer, get the brush size you want, then click once within the image to place it. I'm going to name this layer Brown Layer. From here on out, the method to your madness changes, however. Rather than creating layers beneath the other one and painting, we're just going to begin by duplicating this brown layer. Right click on the layer in your Layers palette and choose Duplicate Layer. You could name it right here, but I forgot to. I uh, go back in and I rename the layer pinks. Then choose the F looking icon at the bottom of your layers palette to add a color overlay. Choose the second color that you want to add, pink in this case, and then hit OK. So now you've got the brown layer beneath and a pink layer on top. And there's a few ways to proceed at this point. You could Use the lasso tool and try and select the areas you want to erase, but I'm a digital painter, so I love me the eraser tool. So I'm just gonna select that eraser tool with a plain round brush and go in and start erasing the parts that I do not want to be pink. You should get the idea at this point. We're just gonna keep adding layers and erasing the areas that you don't want in that color. I wanted to say add some green leaves, so I add a green layer by duplicating the brown original layer again adding a color overlay of green, then erasing everything that I don't want green. This looks nice how it is, but you can also combine your skills at this point. You could start making layers beneath the ones you created here and painting in the shape like we did with the type ones. At this point, I just wanted to show you a collage of the different preview images that I created using these techniques, since this is really how the tutorial originally originated, people asking me how I made such colorful preview images using just brushes. So hopefully this helps you make the most out of the brushes that you download from Obsidian Dawn. I doubt that most people will want to spend the time that it takes to hand paint some of those image-based brushes, which is why I stopped making them. Uh, the planet brushes here, those took a while, but turned out great. But the other two methods for coloring in and changing the color of the shape or vector-based brushes, those should be invaluable. Please feel free to comment here or on my website if you have any questions. Also, if you're interested in seeing when I come out with updates, new resources, tutorials, etc., please subscribe. Tutorials will show up on my YouTube channel if you'd rather only see those, but I also have an updates list on my website, which you can either just subscribe to my RSS feed or I have email updates. If you click on the email updates tab, both of those can be found in the far right of my website. There's tabs right up against the scroll bar. Or if you prefer updates through Facebook or Twitter, I've got links to those in my footer. Thanks.